Hi, this is Sean Bondley. I'm a senior IT consultant with Clear Technologies, and I'm also recognized as an IBM Power Champion. And I'm going to go through the steps of what's required to install the new PowerHA version 7.2.1 GUI, along with actually performing a demonstration of performing those steps. So first, let me go through the steps uh, required. Um, we have new file sets in 7.2.1. We have a common agent and server. So for every one of the PowerHA cluster nodes, you'll need to install both the common and the agent. Now for the actual server itself, you only need the server and the common. You don't need the agent. The agent is for the nodes uh, only. Now you can actually install the server on any PowerHA node. Uh, however, I suspect many will do what I'm doing, which is I'm installing the server on a standalone AIX partition. Now, this specific partition I use for multiple small jobs, um, many things sort of like this one. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do, is it's going to be on a standalone node. Now, one of the prereqs for the GUI is that SSH must be installed and running on both the client and server. Now, I expect that to be pretty common in most environments anyway. So I'm not going to show actually installing SSH. All my nodes already have it uh, installed and configured. Now, after you install these, um, specifically the server, when you install the server, you're actually going to see feedback from the installation telling you about this new uh, user, in, user interface install script. So um, you actually have to execute this script, and it will download additional packages that it needs to configure and install the server. Now, this means the server node itself should have internet access. However, if it does not, you can actually copy the script over to another system that does execute the script with this minus D to tell it what directory you want it to download all the packages to, and then either move all the packages over uh, back to the install server, or what I did in my case is actually I, I um, copied the install script over to my NIM server, downloaded the packages in a directory on my NIM server. It's part of a file system that is NFS exported, and I already have it mounted on my designated GUI server. So then I just run the install script with the install option with the local directory of where all the packages are installed. So that is how I'm going to demonstrate uh, performing this installation. So at the end of the installation, it'll actually give you a URL of how to access the GUI itself on your server. Now, uh, the important thing to know here too is all these steps are important, but the last piece is the supported browsers. Uh, you can see Google Chrome version 50 or later, Firefox version 45 or later. I can say from my experience, I tried Internet Explorer and some of the Windows scaling uh, would overlap. So um, I had another colleague that actually used Firefox version 30 and when trying to add, the, add a cluster, the uh, window for that add cluster screen was all condensed and uh, not really usable. So I can prove that unsupported browsers really don't work uh, with this GUI. So um, now I'm going to switch over to my uh, demo I recorded earlier of actually installing this. So here are the four systems that I have. The bottom two nodes, uh, Jessica and Jordan, they're actually part of my HA cluster. You can see that the cluster is up and running, everything's stable. The top left system is going to be the GUI server and the top right is actually my NIM server. So the first thing I need to do is actually install the common and agent on the actual nodes. So I'm going to break out of here and start this up. I've already shelled out of a, a previous SMIT install screen. That's how come I'm able to access it uh, quickly. So I'm telling it to install both the agent and common. I'll kick that one off and go ahead and start installing on my other node. And 
the install takes a minute or two. Um, this is a little time condensed. Once in a while I shave a few seconds, but overall uh, not a lot. So now you can see on the uh, server itself, I'm going to install the server. It should actually prereq the common and install the common anyway, but I'm specifically telling it to install. And I'll get a, go ahead and get this going. Now, the server does actually take a minute, uh, maybe a full couple of minutes, to get installed. Um, you'll see some of the things that it does during the install. But there's, there's one of the first notifications of the install script. Now, later in the install, that's going to pop up again as a reminder. And then I'm going to copy that script over to my NIM server on the top right of this screen and then use my NIM server with internet access to run the download to download the additional packages that are needed. And this is close to getting done. There was the script again. So I'd already saved that in my buffer, that path for the script. So now I'm going to copy it over. Oh, I can't do that. I don't have write access on my NFS. I'm going to SCP it over. Okay, so now I've got it copied. I'm going to execute the script with the minus D telling it to use the, the local relative directory to pull all the packages down. Okay, so I'll tell it yes that I want to continue downloading and install. Now this is actually going to take a minute or so to complete the download. And since it's going in that directory that I already have NFS mounted, I can look over on my server and I see those packages are showing up locally. Then once this completes, I'm going to run the command again with the minus I for the install flag. There we go, now the download's complete. I'll execute the script. Minus I, tell it my local directory. And then this too will take a minute or so to install. It says attempting to start the server. There's actually a daemon that you'll see called UI server. And now you can see the URL that it gives me. So I'm going to open up my browser window and paste this into a new session. And I'll have to add my exception. And now I just log in. So typically you'd log in as root. It helps if I put the password in before I tell it to log in. Okay, now the first thing I need to do is actually start adding clusters um, to the GUI so it can so I can monitor it. In my case, I'm doing it by IP address. Um, you can do it by name as long as the name is resolvable. Um, I actually did it earlier and had a, um, a typo in my Etsy hosts. And even though it discovered the cluster very quickly, it still has to pull in additional information from the cluster, so it does this data gather. And while I had that typo in my Etsy host, that took a long time for it to come back. Once I fixed it, the data gather ran pretty quick. So now you can see my cluster, my nodes, my resource group, where it's online at. And there's only a handful of options initially. You can see here I get a kind of a general overview of the cluster settings. Um, the initial release of the user interface is really for monitoring the cluster. You can't really do any administration of the cluster. Um, but one neat little feature is the fact that you can open a terminal session 
to a, any cluster node straight from the GUI. Um, you know, it's almost like uh, HMC, but of course it's not uh, going through the hypervisor to perform that function. So I think this might could be, you know, kind of handy at times, especially for um, large environments. So now I'm just going to show the uh, network overview, and that's about it. Um, you can actually get um, log information, event summaries. Now this is a brand new cluster, so I don't really have anything to show on mine. But one thing that is kind of handy is I may try to show more use of the user interface in another demo is that you can actually view the logs from multiple nodes, you know, two more nodes at a time, and kind of sync the logs up. Uh, so from a viewing and troubleshooting perspective, uh, kind of handy. Uh, if you've ever had to dig through the logs and try to match stuff up, it gets to be a bit tedious. Uh, and viewing the logs in multiple windows uh, and have them synced up is, is pretty nice. So this is the first you know, iteration of the user interface. Um, there's a lot more, you know, feature usability enhancements planning to come up in uh, updates and, and newer versions. But um, since the focus of this was the install, the install is completed, the cluster has been added, and you can monitor the cluster from here. So as always, if you have any questions, you're welcome to leave feedback on the channel. You can always send me an email at the email address provided at the beginning of this video. And as always, thanks for watching.